Moolah La is brought to you by the nonprofit credit counseling agency, Credit Canada. You have certainly heard about veganism. You may have heard about vegan leather, uh, vegan burgers maybe, but have you ever heard of a vegan financial advisor? Justin Manning is exactly that. That is how he refers to himself. Though, like vegan leather, I kind of don't know what it means. So that's why he's here. here. He is here to tell us how he integrates veganism into his practice and uh, some of the things he does for and with clients. He's in Langley, British Columbia today. Hello there. Hello. What does it mean to be a vegan financial advisor? I'm inferring that it means more than just following those practices in your personal life. Yeah, it does. It A good way to think about it is a, a slogan called cruelty-free commissions. So okay. in a world where financial planning and financial services uh, is very abundant, um, being a vegan financial advisor speaks to a certain group of people who really value uh, certain alignment and shared interests. And uh, that's what it means. In your initial conversations with clients, um, how do you assess whether or not there is a fit? Does a client need to be vegan to work with you? No, clients don't need to be vegan for us to work together. Uh, there are plenty of uh, current clients that I have that you know would not identify as such, but uh, in terms of a fit, um, it's really about getting to know the person. Everybody's different. Everybody's on their own path, on their own journey. And it's really a matter of finding a fit whereby folks are open-minded. You know, I'm not mm -hmm. perfect. No one's perfect. So it's really about having an open mind and trying to be better. How do you integrate veganism into your practice? If you ran a restaurant, super easy, like really, really clear. There's the menu. There's no meat products on it, right? But in this case, how do you integrate it? Yeah. So back to this whole cruelty-free commissions piece, uh, it's integrated in that way in that when clients choose to work with myself or maybe other vegan financial advisors, they have the understanding that uh, if they were to follow the money, um, them choosing to work with that individual or myself, the, the money is not going to be spent um, on things or uh, services that don't align with their values. And so when you follow the money, that's sort of what it means. And then the other integration is um, commonly known as the socially responsible investing space or the mm. ESG, environmental social governance um, investing space. And it comes up in those conversations a lot, people thinking about the climate crisis, otherwise known as climate change, and how can their actions and where they're putting their money and the folks that the folks and the firms that they're choosing to work with, how do those people see these issues? The most obvious, uh, you know, stock that I can think of would be something like Tyson Foods or maybe McDonald's, right? That they wouldn't fit within a portfolio uh, that you would recommend to clients. But there are other names in which it's a it would be a question mark because they may have, well, Maple Leaf Foods, they have sausages. They also have a huge business that is plant-based. How do you um, circle those squares? Well, nothing, unfortunately, right now is perfect uh, mm -hmm. in this sphere of socially responsible investing 2.0 if we're going into the veganism cruelty-free sphere. So nothing is perfect. Again, it comes back to, uh, at least my perspective, is progress over perfection. And mm -hmm. so where does and each individual is going to be different in terms of their comfort level of certain positions right so um, it's really about progress over perfection let's use maple leaf as an example in that it's a name people recognize from the grocery store if not from the stock market would that be um, a name that you would recommend either as an individual name or it just happens to appear in a particular index well, that's the thing. I don't recommend individual stocks for folks. And so if that is a uh, company in an overall index, uh, then it comes to that conversation with that individual client. Is this of your comfort level? What's the weighting? How much of it of the exposure is in that portfolio? And what's your comfort level with it? Uh, we began this conversation talking about veganism. We included socially responsible investing. Um, how do you think about energy, fossil fuels or alternative energy, given that that 
it's connected, but it isn't the same as a vegan approach. Yeah, exactly. Vegan might mean different things to different people. To your point earlier, a lot of people might think that that specifically means nutrition or food choices where a lot of other people are very staunch in saying that veganism is not a diet. Um, mm. It is an overall lifestyle, which would include, to your point, entertainment, fashion, food, um, energy. And so, yeah, it's an important conversation. Mm. And in this space, um, there's a lot of what is known as greenwashing. So yeah. it is incredibly important to not um, take something at face value and you know lift up the hood, as they say, to see what's actually working underneath and uh, ensure that there is no greenwashing happening. And um, one example to your to your point about energy is the EV space, the electronic vehicle space, mm. um, and going deep into what does it take to actually produce lithium um, and what is involved in that? Uh, for those who don't know, lithium um, is referred to in some spheres as white oil um, and the labor intensive um, processes, uh, environmental processes that are required to extract lithium. And so it's, it's, it's a complex conversation. Yeah. And you, you have a, um, you know, you have an extraordinary gathering of people who follow a vegan lifestyle and you have an incredibly diverse group of people. So you have some in that room who come to it from a political, I have a friend who um, came to veganism from a political perspective and is a terribly unhealthy eater. It's like bag of chips for dinner. And then I have other friends who couldn't care about the politics. They're all about my body as a temple. And so this is how I, how I'm doing it. And I'm, I'm, making a false dichotomy there just to illustrate a point when you think about your choice to pursue that lifestyle how is it for you how did you come to that choice and how would you articulate what it means for you get to myself in a second i'm a believer that regardless how somebody comes to considering being open-minded or maybe full full going towards veganism themselves and living that out however they come to it um, I am totally okay with if, yeah. if it's going to benefit, um, the environment, if it's going to benefit human health, if it's going to be benefit animal health, um, uh, regardless of someone's decision to do so, I think that that's a win, win, win. And so for me earlier on, um, uh, I was running a full marathon for blood cancer research. I ended up coming out of that with a stress fracture in my leg. I ballooned up near 65 pounds. That was the first time in my entire life that I really looked at nutrition and um, spent some time figuring that out for myself. And so I followed a apparently since debunked book called Eat Right for Your Blood Type. Um, I was not vegan at that time, but I was more aware of nutrition for myself. And over the span of a year, I dropped those 65 pounds and regained my ideal body weight and then just happened to stumble along this thing called vegan. And uh, tried it out for myself and realized immediately, wow, this is easy. Wow, this is delicious. I don't find it difficult at all. And a couple of weeks had went by. And as a, a licensed fitness coach at the time, I was blown away by the uh, recovery time that I was experiencing and the lack of soreness and lack of inflammation. Hmm. And so that kept me going. Um, and then a documentary about the environment and then a documentary about animals and sort of reinforcing my decision. And here we are 13 years later. Wow. I want to ask you, and I'm going to ask you this question because I think it will be in the minds of our listeners. Um, and that is how do you address the potential trade-offs that you could be making because you are not recommending investment choices just for the money. So clearly someone who is going to retain a vegan financial advisor has a more holistic view of the role that their money plays in their life and in, um, in, in the context of our world. How do you talk about or think about the potential trade-offs? Because I don't think it's proven that following, um, you know, an investment strategy that does have some limits on the kinds of investment it does. I don't think that's, you know, settled in either direction. Yeah, I understand that question. And if that question was posed to me five, ten years ago, um, the the facts would have stated that yes, um, taking a position that does value, you know, the planet and people over profit, um, you might very well sort of 
for certain be giving up some returns in order to do so and put yourself in that type of a position. Fast forward to where we are today and moving forward into the future, I don't think that it's going to get anything but better. Um, even so, um, companies that are not mandating, um, again, not the greenwashing version of, of ESG and socially responsible, but the, the real versions, um, companies that are not implementing those into their practices, um, I think we're actually going to see those companies suffering and those investors in those uh, portfolios actually having less returns mm. um, than those who are putting, putting themselves in a position um, to benefit the planet. Just one last question before we go. Do you approach the investing universe from a top down or a bottom up perspective? So said another way, are you looking for companies that fully deliver on what you're talking about? Or do you look at that whole group of, you know, the Fortune 500 or the TSX or whatever? And I know you don't recommend specific stocks, but let's say the top indices that people could invest in or mutual funds that they uh, invest in and then just filter out who doesn't fit the criteria? Which which approach do you follow? Well, there's there's a couple different approaches, and it's again going to sort of depend on the client. My specialty in the financial planning space is actually in the risk management insurance side of the space, and so that's my specialty. So when it comes to recommending portfolios and top down, bottom up, I'm actually going to be bringing in. So part of the value that I bring to the table for clients is I'm really good at what I do, and when it comes to specific investment management choices tax planning, uh, estate planning, if we're talking about a lawyer is bringing in those pieces to the puzzle because I'm, I'm, you know, I'm Justin Manning. I can't be all things to all people. And so um, to answer your question, I'd be bringing in the specialist for that part of the conversation. Do you have a copy of Thug Kitchen? Of course. I think we have both the new, Sorry. the newer version and the older one. <laughs> for those people who have not ever embarked on a um, vegan, uh, you know, recipe hunt, it's one of the best, but it's hilarious. It was, a, I was reading it on the subway and I was cackling out loud as I read through recipes, which would never have occurred to me in my life. Justin, that's the time that we have. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you so much, everyone. Justin Manning uh, calls himself the vegan investor. So we're spending some time uh, talking about what that actually means in practice. 